Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name's Lucy and I have lost just under eight stone currently over the course of about two years. I, I wanna say probably four years, but I, I'll go more into the journey in the video and why those two timelines are so different. I asked you guys to ask me literally anything you wanted about my weight loss. You guys came through with the questions, so I'm just gonna be going over everything. And in this video, there's gonna be everything from motivation, food, exercises, mindset, things that helped me. And then if you guys have any more questions off this video, then please leave them down below. I am gonna probably be doing a series of quite a few different videos on things that have helped me during my weight loss, whether that's lessons I've learned, specific food and meals that I have eaten and that I've loved during the process. So the first one is a really good one. How do you find the motivation to lose weight? I've talked about this a little bit on my channel before, but the reason that I initially wanted to lose weight is that I was very, very heavy for my build, for my height. I was getting ill so often. I was picking up every single virus under the sun, every single bacterial infection. I was then on antibiotics. Like I wasn't as active as I wanted to be and I couldn't be as active as I wanted to be because I was so big. I never really wanted to get myself in that state ever again. I want to move forward with my life being the healthiest, best version of myself. And whilst I know that that's not always super realistic in terms of like, there's gonna be kind of dips here and there. And even throughout my cycle on a month, monthly basis, there's gonna be times where I have more energy to work out. And there's gonna be times where I don't have any energy and I'm kind of feel really flat due to my period or just different kind of dips in my cycle, um, my menstrual cycle, um, in this case that, that wasn't obvious. But I really wanna be in shape, I wanna to be toned, I wanna to be slimmer. I still have probably, I wanna I want say probably about a stone to a stone and a half left that I want, want to lose. And I've set myself small kind of incremental goals along the way and when I've got there, I'm kind of like, mm, I feel like I can progress further than this. And so, yeah, I think from now I've got like maybe a stone, stone and a half. I might get to like another half stone and think, mm, actually, this is kind of where I want to be. But I think knowing or not knowing what my body is actually capable of is so cool to me. I didn't, I didn't think that I'd be able to get here where I am right now without kind of triggering my eating disorder again. For those of you that don't know, I'll kind of catch you up to speed really quickly. But I struggled with various different eating disorders for over 10 years until probably what is it now, 2024? I wanna to say till 2022 was probably when I really kind of kicked it in the butt. Um, I guess there's been times where I've been better, sometimes that I've been worse, but yeah. I, I, and there's still days that I, that I struggle, but there's never, I've not relapsed or there's never been a, a scenario in which I have made myself sick again or anything like that. Like those habits haven't been reintroduced at all. I'm very lucky. My, boyfriend Dan, he has the most incredible relationship with food and it's been really good for me to kind of copy that. I can emulate a lot of that and have him as an example every day. But yeah, to run back to the question, my motivation every day is genuinely like, I can't wait to be the best version of myself. I am so excited to see what I can actually achieve. Now, by no means do I want to be some sort of bodybuilder or like have the most insane physique, but for me to go from where I was and be able to change that so drastically from there to now, I'm really proud of, and I can't believe I've been able to do that with still retaining a really healthy outlook on me as a person, food in general. I'm gonna move on because I don't feel like I need to answer every question for seven minutes, but yeah, I'm gonna try and be more concise. I just feel like I have so much to say and I feel like I could genuinely sit and talk about this for hours but I don't wanna bore you guys. <laughs> so the next question is, what workouts slash steps per day are you doing? Now, this is something that has varied genu genuinely since the start of my journey, right at the very start, four years ago. And I say this has kind of taken four years. And if you guys want a more in depth, like kind of rundown in terms of timeline on my weight loss, then let me know and I will do that because that in itself will take a long time. But Right at the start, the workouts I was doing are very, very different to the workouts I'm doing now. And I have varied them massively across the kind of four year span that I have been kind of working towards this goal. Right at the start, I did a lot of HIIT workouts. Um, 
but they were low impact. Anytime I ran or kind of did any sort of jumping exercises, I got really bad shin splints and it was really bad on my knees also, I guess because of the weight that I was carrying, it wasn't good for my joints. So I stuck to lower impact stuff. There were so many I found on YouTube that was like, 25, 30 minute, low impact, no jumping hit workouts. And they were really helpful. I feel like even sometimes now, if I'm not feeling like I have like crazy energy, I will fling one of them up and do it as well. I also then got to a stage where I felt like I was kind of getting stagnant in my weight loss and I had a bit of a breakdown. And I said to Dan, like, I don't know what to do anymore. Like I've been, I was doing weights at the gym at that point and I wasn't really losing weight. And I kind of felt a bit like stuck in the mud, I guess. And he was like, well, why don't you try running? And I was like, oh, I'm not a runner. Like, I'm, I am not a runner. And he was like, why are you not a runner? I was like, that's a really good question. I don't know. I've always said that I'm not a runner and I didn't know why. I think because, and again, this is back when I had an eating disorder, when I would run every single day. And I think, that kind of, I guess, association with running was subconscious in my brain. So then when anyone asked about running, I'd be like, oh no, I hate running, like I'm not a runner. But then when I was actually asked why I'm not a runner, I was like, I don't know actually. That's a really good question. So after that, I decided that I was gonna run a 5K every single day. And until I, I well, actually my, Original plan was to run a, a 5K every day for 30 days. It turned into 45 days. So I did it every day for 45 days. The first time I did it, now bearing in mind, I was probably like, I think four stone heavier at the time. Uh, this was about, um, I wanna say this was about a, two years ago, uh, just under maybe and a bit stone heavier and yeah it was tricky it was really really tricky the first one took me way over an hour and 20 minutes i when i say run a 5k it was do a 5k i couldn't run for more than like a minute and a bit consistently i was too out of breath i was really unfit despite going to the gym and doing all these workouts my heart and lung capacity and my heart health and in general was just terrible. So it really was difficult and I underestimated how hard I would find it. Just because also in the past, like when I was a teenager, I was so active, I was so fit. I uh, did sport at an international level. I also like swam competitively. And so that was like a really big shock that then I went into running and I was like, oh my God, I am terrible. I can't run, I can't do this. I'm so brave. I hate it. But I had one thing I knew was that the only person I was letting myself, letting down was myself if I didn't do it. And one thing that Dan said to me is that your body will always keep the score. And that really helped me because it allowed me to take full accountability that even if I had kind of deluded myself into like, oh, I tried my best. Like if I didn't, the only person that would affect is me. And that was really helpful. So yeah, after my first, like, I, I wish I knew actually how long it took me, but it, I knew, I know it was well over an hour and a half, um, an hour and 20 minutes at least, I think. Like it was a really long time. I was out of the house for a long time. And I remember the first day I came back and I was like, oh my God, I did it. And I was so gassed. Second day I went out, I did it again. And it was about the same time in that I did it the first day. Obviously there's not been like a crazy amount of improvement uh, in a day, which is also, I guess, a bit of a kick in the teeth for me because I think I expected like, I don't know, miracles overnight or something. But when I got back from that one, I just broke down in tears and I was like, oh my God, like this is so difficult. And like, I felt like I was so far away from where I wanted to be that it just like, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, dusted myself off, had breakfast, got on with the day and went again the next day. And by the end of the 45 days, I was doing a 5K in like 45 minutes, which I was so proud of, like the amount of time that I'd knocked off 
from that was ridiculous but also I, I had lost a lot of weight in that in that 45 day period just from being active like getting up first thing in the morning doing the 5k like it took a long time and I was absolutely exhausted and I think during that 5k time as well I, I accidentally um, was eating in like a keto diet state so I started to get really bad migraines and I felt horrible and Dan was like well, what are you eating like this is like so all of a sudden and I hadn't been eating enough carbs like not even nearly and I think that was just really subconscious in my brain kind of past trauma repeating on me of what I should and shouldn't be eating and yeah more carbs and I was off my way again and yeah that was kind of that state so I did a lot of running then then I started to get into classes and for a long time I love class like I have loved classes for a really long time I also have a pool at my gym so I swim a lot I love like really intense classes I also love boxing I don't do it often but I it is one of the best workouts if you can get yourself into a boxing gym classes are really great because I feel like there's such a range of people in a class and you can kind of like if you're not super confident just like perch yourself at the back I've no, never been to a class that's like really not a nice environment so I would encourage everyone to go to classes whether it's at the gym or you can do online classes sometimes and yeah I feel like now currently I am just aiming I don't have a step goal I feel like every time I've had a step goal it's been more negative than positive and I feel like that's a really controversial opinion but I I do and I don't I don't have a step goal per se but I do have a rule that if I don't go to the gym or do like specific exercise that day I aim for 10k steps but if I do go to the gym then that's my exercise for the day I don't stress myself about going to the gym and hitting 10k steps because it might not be possible that day but if I don't go to the gym then I do make sure that okay well at least if I've got a meeting in London then I will walk I'll get off a few stops earlier on the tube and I'll walk there there's just like tiny little choices that I make now that I didn't used to make that I feel like really make up the difference in terms of how I live my life now I guess like I won't always make the most nutritious choice when it comes to food but more often than not I will if that makes sense and I also have eliminated like good and bad foods from my vocabulary as much as I can it's not something I say anymore Dan will also correct me if I say oh like I'm not eating that it's bad for me I will be corrected he'll be like you can't say that don't say that about food and it's really given me like a deeper education on how to speak about food and there's a video actually that I watched Dan showed it to me this morning of James Smith who's a PT and he's really great I love him as a content creator I love him as a PT I think he's brilliant the message that he sends is super realistic and super to the point and I'll get down to put this video uh, the video that I'm talking about in this video if we reduce this we're jeopardizing fibronutrients so it makes sense but maybe we reduce this but just because removing this makes everything better it doesn't make this bad we cannot synthesize the nutrients we need without eating it and putting it in our mouth. It's our responsibility to get the most nutrition we can in through our diet because it'll make us feel better. People that feel better exercise more. People that feel better are more inclined to continue with their weight loss journey. So yeah, as you can see from that video, he's very knowledgeable and I feel like the whole cut this out, cut that out, anytime I've done that, it's never worked. Like don't cut things out, enjoy chocolate, enjoy pasta, like, the whole pasta's bad for you thing was something I really had to get over because I felt like it was and it's literally not like pasta is a great source of energy it's a great carb it's really tasty I really like it makes me very happy and I have pasta about I want to say like at least four times a week maybe five like I eat pasta a lot I eat cheese a lot there's not really anything that I, in fact, there isn't anything that I don't eat. So yeah, in terms of workouts as well, carbs are great to fuel your workouts. I always have like toast, bread, pasta, potatoes, all of it. I eat all of it. I eat everything. 
but yeah workouts change all all the time and i feel like that's helpful by the way i feel like changing up your workouts and not getting stuck in unless you're someone who just loves routine and likes to do the same thing then go for it i feel like i need to change it up otherwise i get bored so i do classes i'll do workouts by myself i've also recently dan's been coming to the gym with me and doing like arm workouts because i'm not super confident in the gym doing like upper body so he's been helping me with that switch it up if you get bored it really helps how did you start i'm struggling with what to what to do to start with this is something that I literally said to Dan before this video. It's so funny that before I started, I put so much pressure on how I was going to start that it delayed me from actually starting. Sounds really silly. I'm sure I, maybe some of you guys can relate to that. I was Googling, I was going on YouTube, best way to lose weight, fastest way to lose weight. Uh, how does weight loss actually work? I wanted to know the science behind it. And all of this information was literally pointless for me starting like actually getting started what i should have just done is and the best rule um for me personally when i was starting is move more and eat less and that's dan kind of helped me simplify the rule because before i started and kind of how i got myself into the situation i was in is i was just eating too much like i my portion sizes were wild i couldn't even eat half of the amount of food that i used to eat on one plate like the amount of food i used to eat was obscene and I mean that like in not in like a shaming way, but like I didn't need that amount of food. My body didn't need that amount of food to sustain and be alive or even like optimize anything. I feel like now I view food in like two lenses, I guess. The first lens is uh, food for fuel, food for fuel, and the second lens is food for enjoyment. And what I really, really wanted to be able to get to a point in my life that I could do was eat for enjoyment without the guilt because that's something I used to really struggle with. And that was the kind of first lens of food for fuel was really necessary for the second one to actually be able to come to fruition, if that makes sense. So I really stripped back everything and did like a calorie counter on how, how many calories would I actually need just to like be alive and like my body to like help it function and that varies from person to person by the way so me telling you my daily calories is honestly going to be super pointless because everyone is different and everyone has different needs we're all different heights different builds our daily activities are different so all of those things are going to be different depending on you personally however i can link a calorie counter down below if you want to check that out and just kind of measure your own but for me kind of stripping that back and having that as a baseline and then figuring out inside those calories what do i need how many carbs do i need um how many fats do i need how many proteins do i need inside that and that was kind of my baseline what i was also super conscious of is not to be harsh on myself if those things didn't get met like it was a guideline for me to make sure that if i did feel low was it because i had less carbs that day or was it because i had all carbs and i didn't have enough proteins or fats it can be a minefield but just use it as a guideline rather than bible if that makes sense my biggest struggle when starting was literally starting was my struggle i needed to have all of the information before i did anything and actually if i just got outside and walked for half an hour every single day rather than fearing about that i was doing sorry about hiccups now rather than fearing if i was doing things wrong then my progress would have started a lot quicker so my best advice with like struggling to start is just go outside and go for a walk you don't have to join a gym if gyms like intimidate you or you feel a little bit nervous or not confident enough don't don't go to the gym just because you feel like that's what you have to do to lose weight you don't a lot of my exercise like i haven't been to the gym in a week but i've done exercise every day so i think yeah don't put too much pressure on like what's the best thing the best thing for you if you're trying to start yourself on a weight loss journey is just move more um and maybe have a look at what you're eating you might be eating too much you might not be eating enough of the right things it, it's also individual but the kind of the kind of overall rule is that you have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight and that is something that from the whole of my weight loss journey i lived by and made sure that if something wasn't going my way or i wasn't losing weight or i put on weight i'd just look at my food again and look about look at how much i was moving a question i find maybe somewhat controversial is do you still lose lose weight having the odd cheat day i don't do cheat days i don't do good days i don't do bad days obviously i mentioned about good and bad food and i think cheat day is personally a super toxic term if i fancy a donut i'm gonna eat a donut if i fancy a pizza i'm gonna eat a pizza what i don't do is do that every single day so like if i 
had a pizza and donuts yesterday, for instance, I'm not gonna have it today. Not because I'm trying to restrict myself, but because I'm trying to make sure that on a week by week basis, my diet is balanced and my body's gonna react much better to a diet that is balanced overall than eating a certain way for six days and then all of a sudden injecting my diet with like a whole bunch of sugar. My body's gonna be really confused. And this, again, this is just super personal to me. This is just what works for me. On a seven day period, if on Monday I woke up and had breakfast, went to the gym and then I fancied a chocolate bar, I'll have a chocolate bar. Then I'll have lunch, go about my day, have dinner, cool. On Tuesday, if I wake up and I'm like, oh, I kind of fancy pizza for lunch, I might have pizza for lunch. What I don't do is, I, and again, it's all inside my calories. And what I've realized is that by working out, I don't crave food nearly as much as I used to. I used to crave sugar. I used to crave high saturated fat foods, fast food. I don't crave that nearly as much as I used to. I love chocolate and I definitely crave chocolate now more than I used to but I don't limit myself like if I fancy chocolate I'll eat chocolate I just won't eat a lot of it like I won't overindulge like I'll have a chocolate bar and I don't know I just think it's such a dangerous mentality when you have a cheat day because automatically you're seeing those foods as negative foods which I just don't personally think is is helpful for anyone if it works for some people happy for them but I just don't think that when you're trying to lose weight and trying to improve your relationship with food because if you are in a, in a situation where you're overweight you probably overindulge and you, maybe you don't move enough and so for me it was cutting down my portion sizes I didn't necessarily eat a whole bunch of rubbishy foods anyway. I just didn't move enough and I was eating too much of whatever I was eating, whether that was toast, pasta. Cheat days are not a thing for me. I just have everything in moderation and it's something my granny always says is have everything in moderation and you'll be fine. And it's something that really in this journey has been super important to me because it's also reminded me that, yeah, there's no good and bad foods. And like I said, Dan on a regular basis reminds me that it's okay if I want to have a little bit of chocolate or it's okay if I want takeaway one night. It just means that I need to look at my week or you can do it on a two week basis or however you want to do it. And just make sure that those things are not becoming regular. And also I noticed how they made me feel like a lot of takeaways make me just feel really sluggish and yuck. And that wasn't like conducive to how I wanted to feel in the long term. Like I wanted to feel energized and I wanted to be able to get up and go and be productive. And like, I don't, I'm not like that every day. And like I said, I have takeaways sometimes and I have chocolate sometimes and I have, I eat till I feel sick rarely but still sometimes so i think that's yeah that's kind of what's important is to make sure that you're aware of every day and making sure that you're not doing anything crazy do you repeat meals to keep it easy how do you prep food this is a really good one but also i feel like there is i'm in a lucky position in that i don't have kind of like a regular nine to five job so i feel like if i had a regular nine to five job there would definitely be things that would be more uh, structured in the way that I eat. I hate breakfast. breakfast. Breakfast for me is just so boring. Like it's my least favorite meal of the day. So I tend to just have enough food in the morning that I'm not gonna get super hungry. And that if I'm gonna go to the gym in the morning, it's gonna give me enough energy. For breakfasts, I'll just usually just have toast with something. Toast and eggs, toast and avocado, toast and salmon. Uh, sometimes I have a bacon sandwich. I just hate breakfast, I think it's so boring. So I, yeah, I don't do anything exciting for breakfast. I am gonna start having peanut butter and jam on toast though, again, because I love peanut butter and jam on toast. Just something basic, to be honest. I love cooking though, and dinner time is my favorite. Also, one thing that I've kind of noticed is that I don't eat lunch every day. Like I don't, I have breakfast maybe at like 11. I just don't really feel super hungry. I might have a snack mid, afternoon maybe like a packet of crisps or sometimes i'll have like a little crepe with some chocolate in it but i would say nine times out of ten i just don't really get hungry like during the day i might have a smoothie or a coffee a little cereal bar i've got like the little Belvita cereal bar like just something quick and easy but for dinner it's like the main event for me i love cooking i love cooking curry i love cooking pasta i just love cooking and dinner is kind of where i more often than not 
eat for enjoyment. Obviously for purpose as well because I don't really eat too much during the day. So at dinner time is really the time that I enjoy my food. Like I said, I eat for enjoyment at dinner time as well. Like I love making food that I is really tasty. But last night I made a chorizo mac and cheese, which was unreal. One thing that I do find is really helpful is tuna pasta. If you like tuna, tuna pasta is something that you can make on Monday and it'll last till Thursday. Just make a huge batch, whack it in the fridge, put some cling film over it, and then you can just kind of pick through it throughout the week. That's also something that if I am hungry during the day, then I, if we've got that in the fridge, then I'll have a little bowl of that. I love seafood. I make sure that we kind of have seafood probably like once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks, depending on what I get in the food shop. But prawns were really good for me. I used to have prawn for heat as often. I've had them in a while actually and they're really tasty so I might make them again soon. Any sort of pastas, tomato based pastas um, are super low calorie. If, as soon as you add like cream and stuff like that it kind of adds the calories but like I said if you have like an average breakfast and then you're not really eating throughout the day I don't really think about dinner too much like I just eat like I can't really consume the rest of my day's worth of calories in one sitting if that makes sense. And again I'm not saying that is going to work for everyone. If you have kind of a nine to five regular job I I would be starving at lunchtime because obviously that's when you have your break, you've worked all morning. So it's not gonna work for everyone, but sandwiches are help helpful. I, I feel like people think sandwiches are like the devil because it's bread, but sandwiches can be super low calorie. You can have a tuna sandwich and I like white bread. I know all these people are saying like, choose brown bread and all like, I'm gonna eat white bread, I'm gonna eat white pasta because I just enjoy it more. There'll be times where I might have like a quinoa. I actually love the quinoa salad from Nando's, it's unreal. The more protein you have in your meal, also the more filling it will be. So high protein meals are helpful. Chicken, pasta. I also love veg, so I pack meals full of veg. So if I'm having a pasta, I'll put onion in it, I'll probably put courgette in it, obviously I'll have tomatoes in it, probably put mushrooms in it and maybe carrot as well. So I really pack pasta sauces full of veg and I don't mind them like with lumps in them, like bits of um, veg, but if you don't like that, then you can always blend it. But if you'd like uh, maybe like 10 meals that I love for weight loss or 20 meals that I love for weight loss or any kind of video with all the different meals that I make, then let me know. I would love to do that because like I said, I love cooking. So yeah, let me know. Or if you kind of want like a, almost like a meal, like a diary, a week diary, yeah. Let me know, let me know what you guys think. But yeah, I repeat meals often. Like I said, I pop tuna pasta in the fridge. Any sort of pastas is super easy to do. My breakfast is so boring. If anyone has any ideas of things that I can make that I don't have to cook or I don't have to do anything crazy to a breakfast, I would literally love that because I get so bored. I hate breakfast, it's so boring. It's the worst meal of the day. I know some people love breakfast, but I just think breakfast foods are meh in comparison to dinner. You guys came through with the questions. Like I feel like these questions, and there's so many that I'm not going to be able to answer in this video because I've realized I have now been rambling for too long. The next question is, do you gain pounds on your period? I do and it really breaks my positive mindset. This is something that I didn't understand and I had to really do research into my cycle to understand it more. I also came off hormonal contraception and I, this was about I wanna say like two years ago, I came off hormonal contraception and bought an aura ring. And I've seen it getting like more popular on social media now, but I, yeah, I've had it for about two years now and it's really helped me understand my cycle more, which in turn has helped me understand my weight loss. I stay pretty similar or gain one to two pounds on my period. Once my period's over and that week is done, those pounds shift and often comes with a one or two pounds more of weight loss also. On your period, typically you will gain weight. The weight is not fat, it's typically water weight. Swelling, I don't know about you guys, but like my legs swell, my face swells, my stomach obviously swells. Understanding your cycle and everything surrounding that is really important. One thing I would say is that if it does trigger you and kind of puts you in a bad mindset to know that on your period, just don't weigh yourself and wait till that week's over. It is something that happens. And obviously as a female, that's something we've got to deal with but don't let it get in the way of your progress and don't see it as bad. One thing I do think helps when I'm on my period is to exercise, whether it's just go out for a walk. Some days I'm in too much pain and I can't, but I'll just make sure that I'm moving up and around the house, go for a gentle walk. Some days I'm feeling unreal and I'll go and do like a hit class or a blaze class at, um, at the gym, but everyone's different, but definitely make sure to check in with yourself on your period and just don't give yourself a hard time. You 
don't need to give yourself a hard time at all. It's only gonna make it worse. Your body is already going through it on your period. You do not need to add to the stress of that. So yeah, I'd recommend absolutely not doing that because I have also done that and it doesn't help. You're doing just fine. And just because you gain maybe, like some people gain up to five pounds on their period and that's actually happened to me before also. And then it disappears at the end of the week. So don't stress about it. Next question is, how do you stay motivated with the gym slash exercise you don't like? I don't do exercise I don't like um, anymore. Like I said, at the start, running was something I hated. Now I love running. I went for a run yesterday in the rain, which honestly, if you've told me I would have enjoyed that a few years ago, I literally would have laughed in your face. But yeah, I did a run in the rain yesterday. It was freezing cold. I think persist with things. I don't do exercise that I don't like now, really. I find things that I enjoy more than others. But if I genuinely hate something, like I said to Dan, couple of weeks ago. One thing that I wanted to make sure that I did is not give myself a bad relationship with any type of exercise. So if it got to the point where I was getting kind of sick of doing weights in the gym or I was getting sick of doing a specific class, what I didn't want to do is pair that with a negative association of exercise or the gym. So I'd switch it up, I'd just change. If I didn't like running, then I would switch it up, maybe do jogging on a treadmill if you don't like running outside. If you don't like them, them at all, then maybe try the cross trainer. Again, if you don't like that, try a class. Like there will be some type of exercise that you enjoy with that swimming, it might be tennis. A lot of gyms like have different facilities, there'll be leisure centers near that do different types of classes, online classes. There is so many different types of exercise. You will find one that you like. It might take time. And if you don't like anything, I'd say just don't give up and persist. Because like I said, I used to hate running like and obviously there was reasons as to why i decided that but it was completely subconscious so yeah one thing i'd say is persist with things if you genuinely don't like it after i mean i did it for 45 days then i didn't run for a really long time because i was actually sick of it but then i got back into it so i think once you are kind of bored of something or you don't like it don't write it off forever because if i'd have done that i'd never be running now and i really like running now sometimes i hate just like running at a normal pace so i do like interval training so i'll like sprint for a few minutes then I'll stop and I'll walk, then I'll sprint again, then I'll maybe do a jog. Just literally anything to make it interesting. There's different apps, there's one that I use, it's called 5K Runner and I really like that app. It's got a really good kind of uh, coach in your ear, it tells you when to run, when to walk and I use that kind of as a rough guideline sometimes when it says walk after I've run if I feel like I could run for a bit longer I'll run for the walking period too then the next running period then walk so I think it's just about kind of keeping it fresh in your brain changing things up don't get bored with it and I think when you're bored with it that's kind of when you'll be less engaged and you'll start to hate something try cycling like there's just so many things you can do but yeah persist and try something new this is really interesting how do you balance exercising with your me i'm always scared to exercise in case it wipes me out and then i can't function for days slash weeks uh this is very specific obviously for people with me this is something i have experienced a good couple of times and i think it's just getting to know your body more and this kind of will be more specific to me but i guess some people some other people will be able to re relate to this too is that sometimes i will feel that I have loads of energy and I will overdo it and I've definitely felt that before and then I um, I've, have been wiped out for longer periods of time over Christmas this year. I didn't go to the gym for I think it was like three weeks. I was so unwell. I really ran myself into the ground. I ended up getting a chest infection and a sinus infection. Really, really unwell. I completely shocked my immune system. I was just doing too much in December. So I think just really be in touch and listen to your body. Like I know some people find it a little bit more difficult, but I feel like if you're more in tune every day, you'll figure out when it's too much. For me, I know it's a little bit too much when I start to get um like achy legs and I don't mean like aches from the gym I mean like I get joint pain and like really achy legs and um, when my ME starts to get a little bit worse so I just lay off any sort of like really intense exercise I still exercise and I'll still like go for walks but I won't do anything too crazy so yeah yeah I hope that helps do you use any protein powders you would recommend please I actually haven't ever found a protein powder that I like I feel like protein powders are gross they just feel really bitty i don't like the texture i'm yet to try i think they're the my protein ones that are like waters and they're like protein waters which honestly sounds wild but they look really nice and i've not tried them but i'd like to try them i'm not a huge fan of protein anything with protein like it's a bit like 
One thing I do really like is, I think they're called Bear Bells milkshakes. They're protein milkshakes. You usually get them in like uh, petrol stations. And yeah, they're really nice. I like the strawberry one, but protein powder. I don't think I've ever found one that I love. So if anyone has any recommendations in the comments, then please drop them down below because that would be helpful for everyone. Where do you get your meal inspo? I'm struggling with things to eat. Whenever I don't know what to cook, I Google. I like looking in cookbooks. I also go on TikTok, Instagram. I follow quite a lot of foodie people and foodie influencers. I follow a lot of PTs. One thing I would be careful of is there is a lot of misinformation out there. I I don't love the whole like fake away thing as in like trying to make something healthier just because I often don't think they ever taste the same. And I feel like it's it makes the other version of what you're trying to cook seem bad, if that makes sense. It puts like a negative spin on having a takeaway as if you shouldn't ever have one. So I think my, yeah, my meal inspo comes from, yeah, just doing a bit of Googling really, going on TikTok, depending on what you want to, um, what you want to cook, depending on how many people you're cooking it for. If you've got like something in mind, like an ingredient, like if I want to cook something with chicken thighs, say, I will Google uh, quick and easy meals with chicken thighs. If that's typically something that I want or if I'm trying to find it, like an Asian dish or an Indian dish or something, do you know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll do Google. In the internet is your best friend. There is so many recipes on there. And also sometimes I'll Google like Monday to Friday meal plan ideas. And in that I'll kind of get inspiration for other things that I want to cook. So yeah. Do you have any must haves in your food cupboard slash fridge for healthier eating? Um, Good, just eat my hair. I love cheese strings. Cheese strings are my favorite snack ever, literally in the world. I also love baby bells. I love carrots. I also love crisps. And I feel like crisps are a good snack. I love the Walker's baked crisps. They are tasty. Popcorn, also a really good snack. And all of these are pretty low calorie as well. So yeah, you can kind of, you can go crazy with the carrots for sure. Also I love peppers. I like the little, they're like pre-made crepes with chocolate in the middle, love them. But tuna we always have in the cupboard, beans we always have in the cupboard, beans on toast is an elite dinner, breakfast food. I also have, you know the little gyoza, um, gyoza, I'm not sure how to say it. They are maybe itsu ones, I can't remember, but you get them from like most supermarkets and they're in the freezer section. They are elite little snack they're also really good with some food like if you're gonna have dinner with them just as a little side we always have like chicken nuggets in the freezer just in case i feel like it's so weird because i personally didn't think i'd be able to get to where i am with the food that i eat because of the view that i had on food you can literally eat anything you want to eat it's just how much you eat of those things and how often you eat it and i think that's where a lot of the misinformation online comes from it's like don't eat this replace your carbs with cauliflower rice like you don't have to do that you can and i think you to begin with like trying new foods that you've not tried before is really helpful but even like the pre-made like microwave rices there's ones that you get that you can like snap in half and they're like a smaller portion size i love them they're so handy because even even before like a whole rice packet like a microwave rice i wouldn't eat myself so having like a little half portion already pre-portioned for me unreal those kind of things are really helpful try new foods trying new foods was a game changer for me like i did try things like cauliflower rice i love quinoa now which i didn't really used to love love a risotto oh my god how did i not mention risotto risottos are a really good low calorie meal they use stock and water most of them rather than anything like milk or anything so they're typically lower calorie anyway a lot of them don't have meat in them so i do add meat just to add a little bit of extra protein but without meat just veggie they can be super low calorie the heaters are great because wraps are really nice then they just kind of have like i used to put a little bit of sour cream in it a little bit of mozzarella some veg chicken or prawns depending on what i've done but yeah there's so many things i just don't cut out anything i just have everything in moderation and I just didn't think that was possible. I didn't, like I often get like a little bit overwhelmed and emotional about the fact that I've been able to still have such a good relationship with food and still be able to lose weight regularly. I didn't think that was possible and I didn't think that I'd be able to be where I am. And I'm grateful for Dan for that. He 
corrects me on a on a regular basis even still less regular than it used to be it used to be daily say now like a couple of times a month he'll have to correct me on on things that i'm saying and i know that will take a lot longer like to completely eliminate it from what i say but i do think it's really important the way you talk about food and the way you talk about yourself also and just be patient with yourself like i got really frustrated at the start because i didn't think that i was going quick enough i thought there was going to be overnight but i had a lot of weight to lose and i knew that wasn't going to be quick i knew that if it was quick it probably wouldn't stay off and that's something that you do need to remind yourself is that probably if you're doing it super super quickly you're not changing all of the habits that you need to change in order for you to keep the weight off certainly for me if i could have probably lost the weight that i needed to lose inside six months if i absolutely went crazy but after six months that the habits that i would have put in place and learn as a result of doing it so quickly and so aggressively wouldn't have made it possible for me to four years later still be losing weight consistently and not have put it back on so yeah be kind to yourself be patient with yourself as long as you're not going backwards like you're still making progress and even if you put on a little bit of weight just reassess don't think that it's the end of the world don't think you failed don't think that you've even gone backwards just reassess what did you do differently this week than than other weeks are you unwell did you drink i drank for the first time in about six months a couple of nights ago and the day after I weighed myself and I'd gained four pounds and I was like, what on earth is going on? A couple of days later, those four pounds have gone. So my body was obviously holding weight. I was super, super bloated the day after, which I completely forgot happens after alcohol. So your body's obviously fighting essentially poison. So drinking definitely didn't help me. Um, I don't really drink now, like I said, it's the first time in six months that I drank. I don't really drink now at all and that definitely has helped. Now, if you're someone who kind of drinks socially or regularly, I honestly would encourage anyone to lower that alco alcohol consumption because it doesn't encourage good habits. However, if it is something that you do and you enjoy doing it, don't completely cut it out because there's no joy in completely eliminating things that you like to do like it just it, i don't know i just feel like everything in moderation i don't really care for alcohol anymore like I, I genuinely don't care so it wasn't something that was like a huge decision for me but i will wrap that up there i feel like i've not ans answered nearly en enough questions i have so many more but if you guys have more specific questions that you'd like me to cover in, in a whole video then please let me know down below i would love to maybe do some recipes if you guys want recipes maybe do a week's worth of workouts if you'd like to see that yeah just let me know what you guys want to see or if you don't want to see anything also let me know i don't mind i won't be offended but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i'm genuinely so grateful for all of your support like the messages i've been receiving have been so kind and honestly really inspiring for me to see that i am encouraging some of you to kind of create healthier habits and, and a more healthy lifestyle so that's something i'm super proud of i'm very grateful for you guys for letting me know those things like that really makes my day so thank you for supporting me thank you for all of the kind things that you guys always say like it's crazy the amount of support i've had in my dms and on my posts so thank you for watching thank you for sitting through a very long long video and if you've seen this far then comment down below stanley and i'll see you guys in my next video thank you so much for watching bye